NASA launched the Voyager 2 spacecraft on August 20, 1977, with the goal of studying the extrasolar planets and interstellar space. It was launched as a part of the Voyager program 16 days before its twin Voyager 1 on a course that took longer to get the gas giants Jupiter and Saturn, but allowed for more contacts with the ice giants Uranus and Neptune. The only spacecraft to have visited either of the ice giant planets is Voyager 2. Voyager 2 was the fourth of five spacecraft to leave the solar system after ACH leading solar escape velocity. The primary objective of Voyager 2 is to travel the Jovian system in 1979, the Satan system in 1981, the Uranian system in 1983-1986, and the Neptunian system in 1989 was successfully completed. The spacecraft is now engaged on its extended interstellar space mission. As of March 7, 2023, UTC, it has been in operation for 45 years, 6 months and 14 days. As of February 8, 2023, it had traveled 133.25 astronomical units or 12.38 billion miles from Earth. On November 5, 2018, the probe entered interstellar space at a distance of 122 astronomical units, or 11.3 billion miles, or 18.3 billion kiln, about 1,658 light years from the Sun, and was traveling at a relative speed of 15.341 km per second or 34,320 miles per hour, joining Voyager 1, which arrived at the interstellar medium in 2012. Voyager 2 has left the Sun's heliosphere and is now traveling through the interstellar medium, a region of space outside the solar system. The first direct measurements of the density and temperature of the interstellar plasma are now being made by Voyager 2. What is the history of both Voyager 2 and the whole Voyager program? You will get to know this and plenty more as we dive into the details of today's show, however. Before getting started with the video officially, here's a quick reminder that you can subscribe for free and like the video so that we can boost the algorithm. Comments are most welcome through the NASA Deep Space. Network Voyager 2 keeps in touch with the planet for eight months, in 2020, the probe's outbound communication was shut off due to deep space network maintenance. On November 2, 21,120 communication was resumed after a series of commands presentant carried out and returned with a message confirming successful communication. Full communication with the PRO was re-established on February 12, 2021, following a significant antenna UPG grade that took a year to complete the DS's 43 communication antenna, which is in close proximity to Seabera. Australia is entirely in charge of maintaining contact with the probe. It was predicted that the early years of the space era, that a periodic alignment of the outer planets would take place in the late 1970s and allow one probe to go to Jupiter-Saturn, Uranus and Neptune by utilizing the then new technology of gravity. AIDS NASA started working on a major project called the Grand Tour, which had two groups of two probes, each one of which visited Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto, and the other of which traveled to Jupiter. Uranus and Neptune system redundancy would be built into the spacecraft architecture to guarantee survivability for the duration of the mission. In 1972, the mission scope was reduced, and the Mariner Jupiter Saturn probes to spacecraft, evolved from the Mariner program, took their place. The mission would only involve flybys of Jupiter and Saturn. In order to reduce the overall lifetime program, expect fewer while keeping the Grand Tour option available. The name was altered to Voyager. As the show went on, Voyager 1's main objective was to investigate Jupiter, Saturn, and Titan Saturn's moon Voyager 2 was similarly intended to study Jupiter and Saturn, but its course would have allowed it to either divert to Titan as a backup for Voyager 1 or continue to Uranus, and Neptune Voyager 2 
would receive a mission extension to send the probe towards Uranus and Neptune after Voyager, one's goals were successfully met. Spacecraft design in order to keep the high-gain antenna pointed towards Earth. Voyager 2 is built by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, and equipped with 16 hydrazine thrusters, three axis stabilization gyroscopes, and celestial referencing instruments. Sun Sensor Canopus, Star Tracker, the Attitude and Articulation Control Subsystem, AACS, which also includes eight backup thrusters, and redundant units of the majority of the instruments, includes all of these instruments collectively. Eleven scientific instruments were also built onto the spaceship so that they could observe and study astronomical objects as they passed by. Communications WRA-2 had a sizable 3.7 megabytes, or 12 terabytes, parabolic high-grain antenna to transmit data via the deep space network on Earth because it was designed with the intention of eventually traveling interstellar as a result of the inverse square rule. Communications are carried out over the sand with a wavelength of about 13 centimeters and sand with a wavelength of about 3.6 centimeters, offering speeds as high as 115.2 kilobits per second at Jupiter's distance and then steadily diminishing as distance increases the digital tape recorder. Digital tape can store around 64 megab of data for transmission at a later time, and the spacecraft is unable to interact with Earth power. Three multi-100 watt radio isotope thermo L electric generators are installed on Voyager 2 Ember W RTG. Upon launch, each RTG produced enough heat from its 24 compacted pluton ioxide spheres to provide about 157 watts of electrical power. At launch, the RTGs provide the spacecraft with 470 watts overall, having every 87.7 years. They were expected to permit continued operations through at least 2020, and they already have attitude control and propulsion. The spacecraft included a propulsion module made of 1,123 kilograms, or 2,476 pounds, solid rocket motor, and eight hydron monopropellant rocket engines, four of which provide a pitch and yaw attitude control, and four of which control roll, due to the energy needed to achieve a Jupiter trajectory boost with an 825 kilogram, or 1,819 pound payload. The propulsion module was discarded immediately after the successful Jupiter burn on the mission module. 16 Hydron, Mr. 103 thrusters regularly. Attitude the remaining four are divided into two redundant six thruster branches that stabilize the spaceship on its three axes, while the four employ for trajectory correction. Maneuvers at any one time only one branch of the attitude control thrusters is required. Thrusters are supplied by a single 70 centimeter, 28 inch diameter spherical titanium tank. It contained 100 kilograms or 220 pounds of hydrogen at launch, providing enough fuel until 2034 launch in trajectory. On the August 20th, 1977, NASA launched the Voyager 2 probe from Cape Canaveral, Florida Space Launch Complex, 41 using a Titan III E Center launch vehicle on September 5, 1977. The identical Voyager. One probe was launched two weeks later, though Voyager 2 had been launched on a longer, more circular orbit. Voyager 1 arrived at both Jupiter and Saturn earlier. Initially, Voyager 1's orbit had an APHE line of 8.9 astronomical units, 830 million miles, or 1.33880 million miles, or 1.42 billion kilometers. The initial orbit of Voyager 2 fell very short of Saturn's orbit with an alon of only only 6.2 AU, or 580 million miles, 930 million kilometers. Voyager 2 encountered a problem in April 1978 when no directives were sent to it for a while, prompting it to transfer from its primary radio receiver to its backup reception. 
the primary receiver eventually stopped working totally. After that, the backup receiver was working, but due to a faulty capacitor, it could only pick up messages that were delivered at a specific frequency, and this frequency would be influenced by the Earth's rotation due to the Doppler effect and the temperature of the onboard receiver, among other factors. Engineers had to determine the precise frequency of the signal for each transmission to Voyeur 2 so that it could be picked up by the spacecraft interstellar mission after completing its planetary mission. Voyager 2 was said to be engaged in an interstellar mission that NASA is utilizing to learn more about the solar system's outermost regions. Approximately 160 bits per second of scientific data are being transmitted by Voyager 2 right now. Voyager weekly reports include details regarding the ongoing telemetry exchanges with Voyager 2. The Nova V1974 Sine was seen by Voyager 2 in the far ultraviolet in 1992 and Jupiter in July 1994 due to the craft's position. It had a clear line of sight to the hits, allowing for observations in the radio and UV spectra calculations revealed that the fireballs were just below the craft's limit of detection. Yet Voyager 2 was unable to detect anything on. Detect For supporters of trans inclusion, gender identity determines the right to use a particular bathroom, emphasizing respect and dignity for all individuals. They argue that trans women often face discrimination and should not be excluded from spaces where they feel safest. On the other hand, some feminists assert that allowing anyone who identifies as female into women's spaces could lead to safety vulnerabilities, especially in areas like changing rooms or shelters. The debate ultimately boils down to how society balances inclusivity with concerns over privacy and safety. While many agree that trans individuals deserve dignity and respect, others believe that policies should consider both gender identity and biological distinctions. This ongoing discussion highlights the complexities of navigating gender identity in public spaces. The white privilege debate. When delusional woke people get owned, Chark 19840 to 903. When asked to explain white privilege, the activist accuses people of having it but does not provide substantial evidence. The activist avoids giving reasons for their claim by avoiding the question, yet still deflates the discussion, before quitting to abstain from continued engagement. As the person they challenged continues to remain calm, they clarify their questions, yet the activist realizes there are no supporting facts for their position so they avoid further discussion and leave. The activist terminates their debate by walking away from the conversation to expose their unsupported claim as invalid. Phone requesters in the entertainment clip demonstrate a reliance on empty slogans instead of actual content while avoiding questions. In critical thinking scenarios, these ideological advocates dissolve because their ideological beliefs lack basis in fundamental logical understanding. And there you have it. Ten times woke people got hit with instant karma. Some of these were absolutely priceless, while others were just pure chaos. But hey, when reality hits back, it hits hard. Which moment had you laughing the most? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this breakdown, Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss what's coming next. Trust me, you won't want to. That's it for today. See you in the next one. See you. Jimmy Carter's presidency has endured far longer than anticipated, as is their capacity to return scientific discoveries to Earth. The observations made by Voyager 2 at the outer edge of the solar wind bubble and beyond are detailed in a series of papers that were published on Monday and Nature Astronomy.
the mission's project scientist Edward C. Stone expressed amazement about the probe's endurance at a news briefing on Thursday. We're also quite thrilled that they do, too. The space age was just 20 years old when the two voyages were launched. At the time, it was difficult to imagine something lasting more than 40 years. The data were similar to those made by Voyager 1 in many ways, including a change in magnetic fields and a surge in particle density that was accompanied by a rapid drop in particle speed. These changes were also detected by Voyager 2, which may provide information about the complex dynamics in that part of the solar system. Solar wind, which travels at a speed of one million miles per hour, is a constant stream of particles that the sun continuously ejects in all directions. Most of the particles are hydrogen, but when heated to a temperature of around 3 million dFH, hydrogen atoms are split into protons and electrons. The solar wind, which is thinning out at a distance of more than 11 billion miles from the sun, is being progressively buffeted by the flow of particles in the interstellar wind and a galactic magnetic field created by the explosions of far-off stars. In the distant past, the temperature of the interstellar wind is simply tens of thousands of degrees, and it is also much denser. Some of the disparities could be explained by the fact that Voyager 2 is traveling in a different direction than Voyager 1 in 2012, which is also close to the peak of its activity cycle. The sun was likewise more active the solar minimum. A period of low solar activity is about to arrive. With Voyager 1, the solar wind was pushed sideways and at his outward velocity was zero, well before the boundary. The outward velocities of Voyager 2 fluctuated occasionally falling to zero, and then climbing again strangely the separations from the sun for the two exits from the solar system were comparable. The bubble was supposed to expand during the solar maximum and contract during the solar minimum. According to scientists' predictions, a lot of the models left a lot to be desired, said Stu's Kegis, a physicist at the John Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory in Laurel, Maryland, and the lead research on one of the Voyager instruments in an interview a scientist working with the magnetometer on Voyager. Two described the measurement of the magnetic barrier like the pileup of slowly moving cars on a major highway a few miles ahead of the ray the, the scene of an accident, Leonard F. Prala. The density of the particles rises as the solar wind slows and the magnetic field becomes more powerful. Dr. Baga continued again. It's like the cars which divert away from the accident, prone lanes, and proceed slowly down the open lanes. The dry drivers are hotter and the cars are more closely spaced, but soon they go on. The missions were initially intended to fly by Jupiter and Saturn for four years. Neptune and Uranus were also visited by Voyager. Two Voyager 2 still has five instruments that can be used to measure the emptiness, compared to Voyager 1 as 4 that brings our space trip for today. To a close, what more might we ask of missionaries who have already left their posts? Do let us know your opinion on the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up. It will help us to understand in our audience and allows YouTube to suggest some videos to you. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you at the next one. The comment section below if you enjoyed this video. Please hit that thumbs up. It will help us to understand in our audience and allows YouTube to suggest some videos to you. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you at the next one.